It's time now for business, and Sandra Fenner has joined me in the studio. Hello, Sandra. Hi, Israel. Interesting conversation about the retail market and all that is oh, happening. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There yes. is. But you're, you're here to talk about GDP figures. Exactly. Okay. All right. So, good evening. My name is Sandra and I'm Afeno, and I'm here, as always, for business. Provisional real gross domestic product figures for the country shows an increase of 6.7% in the first quarter of 2019 as against a lower rate of 5.4% in the same period last year. This means that the economy grew higher in the first quarter of the year compared to the previous year. According to the Ghana Statistical Service, the services sector, which includes information and communication technology, health and social work, mining and electricity, were the main price drivers for the growth rate. Here is Ebenezer Sabote's report. The industrial sector recorded its highest growth rate of 8.4%. The information, communication and technology sub-sector, however, increased from 16.3% to 37%, making it the highest contributor to the rate. Government statistician Professor Samuel Anim noted the agricultural sector has witnessed slow growth in the first quarter of this year compared to the previous year. These three sub-sectors within the sub services subsector is accounting for 50 percent of the gdp within the services subsector which is 15,238.7 million ghana cities emphasis is on the drivers within the services subsector and the information and communication subsector is driving the services subsector sub and eventually what we see in, in terms of the 6.7 gdp growth rate that we talked about and it's accounting for 37.0% of the growth within the services subsector. Professor Samo has been explaining how the data was generated. From an estimation point of view, we need to emphasize the fact that the process involves two um, main activities, the data compilation component and the estimation component. And within the estimation component, we have various stages that we go through. We have the provisional, the revised, and the final. The distinction between this is very important because it depends on when data is ready in terms of the full extent of data that we need. And finally, once the data is authenticated, we release the final results. The industrial sector in general recorded a growth rate of 8.4%, followed by the services sector with a rate of 7.2% and agricultural sector with 2.2%. Meanwhile, economist Professor Peter Corte has described the general GDP growth as positive. He is, however, concerned about the low growth rate in the agri sector. Provided that we use part of the resources from oil to diversify the economy, to modernize agriculture, to uh, um, support other sectors of the economy so that we don't have oil driving uh, most of the activities in Ghana. Um, we don't want to suffer from the Dutch disease problem where we focus more on one sector at the expense of, of the other uh, because that can be quite disappointing or can, can be troublesome sometimes um, when oil prices go down, like it happened in Nigeria in 2016. Uh, you have an economic slowdown and economic stagnation. You don't want that. You want to diversify your economy so that when uh, oil prices or one sector is not performing, quickly you adjust and then uh, you're able to cope very well. Uh, we're, we're likely to meet uh, growth targets. Uh, if there's going to be any shortfall at all, um, it shouldn't be, it should be very marginal. I, I think we should. But it's not just, we know oil is going to grow um, given the trends we are uh, seeing. The oil sector is going to drive the economy. But we need to be worried if the other key sectors, agriculture and manufacturing, is not picking up. About 20 retail shops belonging to Nigerian traders were shut down by their Ghanaian counterparts who vowed to evict foreigners from the retail space. This move, according to them, is to compel authorities to implement laws concerning retail trading in the country. Casapreco Company Limited fears the dispute, if not resolved, could have a toll on its subsidiary neighboring Nigeria. Richard J is Managing Director of Casa Preco Company Limited. We just have to keep encouraging um, the government um, agencies um, to do their portion to encourage trade between the two um, countries and not even just between the two countries, um, the West African countries um, as a whole. And I know there are, um, there are some plans in place to even look at um, 
doing a, an African-wide um, trade policy. We would certainly continue to encourage that. The 400 kilowatt solar plant will supply 3.5 percent power generation outside the national grid annually to support the needs of a bottling facility and help to displace power supplied by diesel generators at the height of a day. Mr. J is hopeful prices of its product could reduce in the near future by this project. For us, um, going solar is certainly, as I said, looking at reducing our manufacturing costs um, in the medium to long term. And as our cost um, reduces, um, certainly we look to pass that um, savings to the consumers. Um, so we are looking in the long term to have some of the um, most competitive price in the market for our products. The solar plant installation is Ghana's first power purchasing agreement financed solar plant for a commercial customer. The West Africa Managing Director of Yingli Namin, suppliers of a plant, Fermin Ingasam, says his outfit seeks to make solar plant acquisition affordable. The beverage company is currently saving about 20% operational costs by the help of a new plant. Bismarck Aousas reports for Joy Business. Just what is so, about the Casa Preco manufacturing companies where indigenous beverage manufacturing company Casa Preco is appealing to governments for immediate resolution of the disputes between Ghanaian traders and its Nigerian counterparts. According to the company, the issue, if not resolved, could go a long way to affect its branches in Nigeria. The so China Trade Week has actually opened in Accra and at that opening ceremony the ministry, uh, Minister of Business Development Mohamed Awal says government has set aside 50 million cities for the training of 12,000 young entrepreneurs ahead of the full implementation of the Continental Free Trade Agreement. He has therefore called for more collaboration with Chinese investors as Ghana readies for the implementation of the agreement. The Business Development Minister Mohamed Awal outlined some measures government has embarked upon to make doing business in Ghana more flexible. According to him, government has also set aside some 50 million CDs for young entrepreneurs ahead of the full implementation of the Continental Free Trade Agreement. The Minister of Development would from next week train 12,000 young people, startups, and businesses. We will spend 50 million CDs next month, we took over the next two months, to train young people on startups and businesses to prepare them for the continental free trade area that's going to take place in Africa. The Chinese ambassador to Ghana, His Excellency Xi Ting Wan, explained China's resolve to help in Ghana become an export-led economy. According to him, the China Trade Week will be the best way to deepen bilateral relations between both countries. It will certainly aggravate instability and uncertainty. This complex and fast-changing world requires us to work closely with each other to overcome the risks and the challenges and broaden the space for development through deepening cooperation. Meanwhile, CEO of the Ghana Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Mark Bedou Abwaji, has challenged businesses to take advantage of the various business reforms that make the cost of doing business easy in Ghana. This year's exhibition will showcase more variety and high-end Chinese manufacturers looking to develop long-term relations with local buyers. In other news tonight, Minister of Works and Housing Samuel Atachia has commissioned a rapid housing technology in Accra. Details coming up in our local news summaries, including other stories on the local front. The Minister of Works and Housing Samuel Atachia has commissioned a rapid housing technology in Accra, commissioning a three-bedroom house model constructed within 11 days using the rapid housing technology. Mr. Atachia said the technology is a game-changer in the housing industry in Ghana, which will help wipe out the huge housing deficit confronting the country within a short period. The Management and Union of Bulk Oil Storage and Transportation Bus Company Limited have signed a collective bargaining agreement after 12 years of unsuccessful attempts. The Board of Bus and the Union reached an agreement which has been codified into legal binding documents which would be reviewed every two years to capture development in the labor front to ensure conducive working environment.
The European Union is to invest 4.5 billion euros of its budget in Africa to generate about 10 million jobs on the continent in three years. The Vice President of the EU Commission for Jobs, Growth and Investment, Jerki Katenen, who announced this, called for the strengthening of cooperation and partnerships between the EU and Ghana to ensure a win-win situation as well as accelerate the economic development and prosperity of Africa. Thanks so much for your company. I'll be back after 8 p.m. with more business news. But after